for this morning for another opportunity to come before him and to bring his word to his people. Yes. You know, God is good and he's good at all times. We sometimes see that as a cliche, but God is good and he is good all the time. Let us pray. Father, thank you this morning for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, O Heavenly Father. We thank you, O God, that died waking us up this morning and gave us the opportunity just to call upon your glorified and precious name. We thank you this morning, Father God, because you love us so, Father God, we are here today to praise you. We ask, O God, today that those who are listening, Father God, those who are wandering around, Father God, with no place to go and no word to hear, Father, that a door is open in some way, in some fashion, Father, they can receive you and draft the word which is able to save the very souls today, Father. We ask, O God, that thou just use us this morning, Father God, to bring forth your word, Father God, as you will have us to bring forth. Anoint us, Father, anoint our voice and the pages of this book, Father God. Bring them to life to us, Father, that we may give them to your people. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, good morning. We thank you for being a part of our services this morning. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to try to do this morning, once again, we're going to try to bring you God's word. And we'll be in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29, Proverbs chapter 29, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29 is probably in the middle, probably directly in the middle of your Bible. It's an Old Testament book. It's in the middle of your Bible, pretty much. Proverbs chapter 9, 29. chapter 29, Proverbs chapter 29, and the message title this morning is called, I Was Brought Down. I Was Brought Down. Sometimes we get beside ourselves and we have to be brought down, brought low, uh, put in place, so to speak. So I Was Brought Down is the title of the message. So in Proverbs 29, verses 18 to 27, amen? Let's go. Where there's no vision, mm. the people perish. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Go on. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. They that have no vision, vision perish. But the one that keeps the law is happy. The one that keeps the law is happy. And so many times we don't have vision. You, 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 you hear the analysts often talk about uh, retirement plans, and so many of us do not have a retirement plan. We haven't made any type of arrangement for that day when we will retire. So, in other words, we don't have a vision to do so. We don't have a vision, and when you don't have a vivid vision, you perish. You perish. But if you have a vision and keep the law of God, watch how things work themselves out for you. Where there's no vision, the people perish. But that ain't what we're talking about. But sometimes we could be so arrogant, we don't need a vision. We don't need to make arrangements. We don't need to prepare for what could possibly come. I was driving down the road and I saw a sign that says, uh, be prepared for winter weather. Make arrangement for your winter driving. Giving us a sign that we should prepare for some things. God is telling us all the time, prepare yourself. Amen. Good morning. Thank you this morning. God, tell us these things. So we need to prepare ourselves by having a vision because without that vision, we find ourselves in a state of depression, neglect, and everything else. So we're talking this morning about how God, or how I rather, was brought low. How I was brought down because I was so arrogant that I didn't need a vision. I was so arrogant I didn't need to prepare for nothing. I was so arrogant couldn't nobody tell me anything. So I was brought low. You know, people proceed, proceed and often lead to their own humiliation. Pride brings a person low, but yet, <laughs> pride brings a person low. Yet in the lowness of your spirit, if you turn to God, it will bring you honor. Let's go on to the next verse. 
Proverbs chapter 29. A servant will not be corrected by words. Mm. But though he understand, he will not answer. A servant will not be corrected by words. And though he understand, he will not answer. The word answer should have been translated obey. Obey. A servant won't obey you. That's an arrogant servant. I bet you. Well, I ain't going to bet you. But I say this right here. There have been times in all our lives where we have been asked to do something by someone over us, even if it was just a parent, and we didn't want to do it. We refused to do it. A servant will not be corrected by words. Though he understands, he will not answer. Guess what? A servant or disobedient person have to be corrected with a more stern process. A more stern process. Disobedience is a form of arrogancy. Disrespect is a form of arrogancy. So even though he got it, he won't do it. Let's go on, please. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his word? Mm. There is more hope of a fool than of him. Now that God be God. If you can find a man, a person that's always running to trouble, that's always running. So we 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 talk about this tail barrier, this this old tail barrier, and this old busybody always hasty to run to tell that. I remember I, I worked in this place and it was a guy that and I don't care what was going on, he always running to tell somebody. So they named him Run and Tell That. Run and Tell That. Always being a bit hasty to do things and to say things that you shouldn't be saying. Hasty to make decisions on things that you shouldn't be doing. Instead of being humble. Humble. Pride will bring you low. Pride will bring you low. Let's go on. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child mm. shall have him become his son at the length. Listen, I want, I want to go back up for a moment. I want to go back up for a minute. I want to go back up for a minute. Listen. A person with hasty words, a person who is so quick to jump and drive and Yap and gap and and and, and uh, blame and uh, and obtain uh, stuff that's not there. A person who will face the word is simply in pride, or or simply mean a person with a fiery, negative, bad, corrupted temper. Temper. That's what it is, and they need to be humble. And God has a way of humbling mm -hmm. us. I was brought low. He'll bring you down. Bring me over. Come on. An angry man stirreth up strife. I'm sorry. Go back to 21 for me. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child mm -hmm. shall have him become his son at the length. Mm. He who delicately, patiently, responsibly, morally, correctly, Lovingly, outstandingly, he who bring up their servant from a child. This is why the Bible says, train up a child in a way in which they should go, and when they are old, they won't depart from it. Like I said. I know we act sometimes, what happened? I know I ain't teach them that. I didn't show them that. I didn't tell them that. I didn't teach them how to be like that. But nevertheless, when you get to a certain phase in life, you got a mind of your own. And then that's when God began to hold you accountable for the thing that you do. But until then, we got to watch the words and things we say, because God will bring you down, will bring you low. God will put you in place. Listen, I want to go back up to verse 20 right there. You see, a man who is hasty in his words, there is more hope for a fool than for him. More hope for a fool than for a person who is hasty in their words. This is what we think. Let's think for a moment. And then make a decision by ourselves. We're not going to be with you alone today. Come on. 
The angry man stirs up strife, but a fierce man abounds in transgression. Both the angry man and the fierce man are led by self-indulgence. Self-indulgence. Led by the self and not by the spirit of God. An angry man does not have humility. He's not, he, he don't care about anything. A fear man don't care about anything. All they care about is themselves, what they can get, where they can go, who they can take it from. What's theirs is there, what's yours is there, what's ours is there. Everything that belongs to them because they have no sense of humility. But God will bring them low. God will bring them down. Let's go on. A man's pride shall bring him low, mm. but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the spirit. Mm -hmm. Self always breed pride, while humbleness always breed honor. Self always breed pride, whereas humbleness always breed honor. Pride go before destruction and a halt of spirit before a fall. God deal with the pride is what Solomon theme is in this particular book. How God deal with pride is what Solomon trying to explain to us in Proverbs. The word pride or haughtiness in the verse mean swelling or puffed up. You know, we can get a swell head and we can get puffed up because I got this and I got that. I got this and I got that and you ain't got what I got. I was watching a program uh, a couple of days ago and uh, it was a lady driving down the road and it was a a, a, a man walking across the street and the lady stopped her car while the man was walking and opened her door and hit the man but she jumped out of her car and went to going off on the man said the man you trying to damage my car you didn't scratch my car she was so proud and arrogant and then she slapped the man and told the man to shut up don't say nothing and the man just stood there and looked, very humble. Stood there and looked. And she just going off on. Then the man finally just walked on off. And as the man walked off, another man walked up to the lady and asked her a simple question. Do you know who you was talking to? You just offended that man. Do you know who that man is? You know. I don't care. You. He said, wait a minute. You need to know who this man is that you just offended. And then he told the plaintiff, you need to apologize. But her, her, her arrogancy, her pride had just caused her because the man she offended was a person of Character, I'll put it that way. In other words, it was a person that she did not want to be messing with. No one wanted to mess with this individual. You see what I'm saying? It was saying pride will get you in trouble because pride will have you speaking words to people that you don't know who they are. You don't know if that's the president that you're speaking to. You don't know if that's the number one soldier that you're speaking to. You don't know if that's the devil in the sky that you're speaking to. Pride. Making you think that you are more than you ought to be. But God will bring you down. God will bring you down. Come on, let's go. Who we at? Let's do 24. And then we're going to get ready to get out of here. Amen. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. Mm-hmm. He heareth cursing and berayeth it not. Hears it, but don't get away from it. You get if you if you if you team or a person who's arrogant, self-centered, self-motivated, self-indulged, what I'm saying, narcissistic. 
everywhere they go, they got to look in a mirror. Mm. You know better than that person. You heard those say, walk with a lane, you start limping. Limp, 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 limping. Arizona said, walk like a duck, fight like a duck. What is it? It's aft like. You got it. You're going to limp. So, 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 what it was it? If you, if you, if you partner up with a thief, you hate your own soul. You hate your own soul. Listen, when we are filled with pride, we think more highly of ourselves than we should. And we put others down. And that's what this lady did. She was so prideful that she just treated that man so bad. Talked to him so bad. Not knowing who he was. But if it wasn't for the other fellow that came and told her, you don't know who you're talking to. And told her, you need to go and, and apologize to this man. Mm -hmm. Because what this man is able to do, you can't handle that. So she, he took her to the man. And, he, and, and the man said, this he said, sir, 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 sir. And he said, this is my sister. She made a mistake. She didn't know. So the man finally said, okay, all right. Because she's your sister. Mm -hmm. she Okay, because she's your sister, she can go. Mm -hmm. And the man took around later on and walked by. He said, see, I had to lie for you. Because of your arrogance and your pride, I had to lie for you to keep you from being lost. You know what I mean? <laughs> Taken care of. Surprise. See what pride? Pride will get you in trouble. Serious trouble that you can't get out of. Again, I said that God said that when, when we are filled with pride, we think more highly of ourselves than we should be thinking. But God still has a way of bringing us down and humbling us. Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 12, Jesus made a statement. He said that, he that exalt himself shall be brought low. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. Matthew is the first book of the apostles. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew chapter 23. We're we'll going to see what Jesus said about, about this pride and being puffed up and, and, and things of that nature. And whosoever shall exalt himself mm. shall be abased. Mm -hmm. And he that shall humble himself yes. shall be exalted. He that exalt himself shall be abased. In other words, he who exalt him, lift himself up, will be brought down. And he, he who, what else it said? That shall humble himself. That humble himself shall be exalted. Shall be exalted. He who exalts himself will be brought down. He who is puffed up with pride will be brought down to the ground. But he who humbled himself has that humble spirit, knows how to talk to people, understand how to communicate with people. That particular person who sit back a lot of time and don't say nothing, just look and watch and learn, that individual will be raised up. Exalted. Because pride goes down where humility comes up. I was brought Lo, I was brought down because of my pride. Once again, Jesus said, we exalt ourselves, we'll be humble. And we humble ourselves, we will be exalted. Uh -huh. Amen. Like I said, we're not going to be with you long this morning. Just trying to share a few things with you. Things that make you think. So then, if pride will lead us to destruction, if pride will cause us to be uh, 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 left out, because we think pride is, 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 there is a pride that you can have. I'm not saying that all pride is not good. There's a pride that you can have. You can be pride in what God has blessed you to accomplish. You can be proud of your children, your grandchildren. You can be proud of the job that God has blessed you with. You can be proud of the clothes that God has ha blessed you with. You can be proud of it because you understand and you knowing that it was God that blessed you with that. You can be proud of that fight. But when you get yourself into a situation where you're so puffed up, that's the problem that God don't deal with. A haughty spirit 
goes down before. The heart of spirit going to fall. The heart of spirit going to be brought low. Low. And low. One of the saddest things in the world is an individual who go up a ladder and they get up on the top of the ladder and they look down at those beneath them and they begin to cheer in disgust because they made it to the top and the other individuals at the bottom. What they fail to understand that it took you, for instance, 10 rungs or 10 steps to get to the top of the ladder. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it would take you just that many steps to get back to the bottom. But you're not going to walk back down to the bottom. You're going to fall. And that's a long fall. This is why you never look down on a person that you're picking them up. It's a long way down when you're on top of that mountain. You get so arrogant, so private, so puffed up and began to forget where you come from, who got you there. And the same people you see when you go going up the ladder, you see them when you come back down, if you're lucky, because you fall so hard, you don't see nobody. You're already out of there. That job is gone. That car is gone. That house is gone. That family is gone. Because of your arrogance and your pride. So we should pursue we should pursue humility and lowness as we pursue money, etc. I'm going to say that one more time. We should pursue humility and lowliness as we pursue money. <laughs> I mean, we should run after humility. We should run after lowliness. We should run after godliness. We should run after meekness, temperance, gentleness, and such things. That's what we should be running after. Not arrogance. Not pride. Not haughtiness. Getting ready to close, so I say that everything that we have comes from God. Everything that we have come from God. So we must be wise to know that, to understand that, to rest that, to live in that. Let us not say things that are arrogant and haughty. Let us not puff ourselves up above anyone else. You know, a good servant care for the things of his neighbor. And I've always told my children, I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be better than me. I don't want you to go where I went. I want you to go to a higher height. I don't want you to know what I know. I want you to know more than me. Get what I got and continue to grow. Always trying to exalt the other person, promote the other person above yourself. That's humility. And through that humility, God says in Isaiah, in, in, in Matthew 23rd chapter 12 verse, then he will exalt you. Why well, I got to be down here all the time? Well, stay down there for a while and see what happens. Stay down there in prayer and see what God does. Why well, ain't never got nothing? Just, just stay there in prayer and see what God does. Just do what you're supposed to do with what God gave you and watch what God give you. What's Humility. They messing old men. I need to do something. No, you don't. You need to be humble. God told Joshua, stand still. I want to be of good courage. I want to be a good courage. Now I had a situation happen. That 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 that, that happened. And, and you know, it's so easy for you to get and listen to people and do something crazy. But humility means that God is already working it out for you. If you just be humble, let Him work it out. Don't let the world work things out for you. Don't let the world tell you what you should do and you shouldn't do and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Don't let the world tell you that because the world don't care anything about what's really going on with you. But God does. So let God give us that heart of wisdom to humble ourselves, to honor him, to honor People who honor is deserving. Let God give us the wisdom of humility. Amen. 
That woman on that street that messed with that man, she was lucky. She was straight lucky. I'm not going to say she was blessed. I'm saying she was lucky. Because she's a blessed, she'd have been serving God. She'd have never done that in the first place. She was just plain lucky that someone else knew who the man was and spoke up in her behalf. She was lucky. So when I'm thinking about all this all pride and, and arrogancy and haughtiness that I have myself, I need to think for a moment. Am I always going to be lucky and get away with this stuff that I'm doing? I want to be blessed. So in order for me to be blessed and not have God to bring me low, I need to humble myself. Stay humble. Stay humble. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And watch what happened. Jesus said, I was in prison. You visited me. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was hungry. You gave me food. I was sick. and You took care of me. Why? Because you was humble. You showed humility. And for that, you will be honored. For in my father's house is many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. But I go away to prepare a place for you so where I am, there you may be also. Why? Because you are humble. And I didn't have to bring you low. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. Once again, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're hoping that, that, that something we said this morning will bless you. Uh, just have you to think about what God is doing, what God is able to do, and where you at in your life as an individual. Are you humble? Are you respectful? Are you teachable? You know, these things, these things must, must, must come about. Amen. These things must come about. Am I humble enough to be taught? Or do God need to bring me low? Do God need to knock me down? Do I need to fall off this ladder that I place myself on? Paul said, I learned that whatever state I'm in, therewith to be content. I learned how to both to be above and to be below. I've learned these things because these things are the things that bring me humility. These things are that bring me honor. These things that bring me closer to my Lord and Savior. <laughs> We must follow the footsteps of our forefathers, being humble, being respectful, having humility, so that God will exalt us in due time. See, 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 Jesus said in the book of Revelation, he said that, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, if you are humble enough to open that door and let me in, he said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to soup with you. We're going to talk about some things. We're going to make some things happen. Uh, then I'm going to exalt you. Amen. Amen. Humility is great. We thank you this morning, sister. And brother, for your love, we thank you for your prayers and your blessings. May God bless you and continue to keep you in all that you do. May he bless your family, bless your children, your grandchildren, your grandchild, your daughter-in-law, your brother-in-law. May he bless all those who are involved in your prayers in the name of Jesus. We thank each and every one who has watched us this morning who have been a part of our service morning, may God continue to bless you, to lead you, to guide you, to impart his wisdom to you, impart his humility to you. That way he can honor you in what you do because you deserve it all because Christ died on that cross that you can be honored in the things that you do. Christ did it. So we praise you and we thank God this morning for each and every one of you. Let us go through this week being blessed because of what God is doing for us. Not having weakness, but having faith that he's able to do above and exceed all we are able to ask or even think. Because he is God and he cannot lie. He's not like man. The word that goes out God mouth will not return to him void. Israel, he says, shall not return void, but it shall accomplish things in which he please and prosper in the way in which he sent it. God bless you. We love you. Believe in God's word. Trust in God's word. 
Be humble and watch God give you honor and praise. When things are going bad, what do we do? We put a praise on it. When things are going good, what do we do? We put a praise, we on, put it. A praise on it. We put a praise on it. We put a praise on it. God bless you and we love you. Amen.